Alrighty, so today I am plugging another movie into the one-shot review system and we're doing it on a new phone today so I'm not quite sure if this video is going to end up being just as easy to film as the rest or if there's going to be some issues but we'll figure that out when we get there. Um, so the movie we saw today was A Haunting in Venice and before I even get started I just want to say that I did not think that I was going to be interested in really seeing this movie. In fact, I've been putting off watching Equalizer 1 and 2 uh, because I really want to go see Equalizer 3. Just seems like a movie I would like. And uh, watching two movies at any point and then filming another video about it just from my house seems a little bit intimidating right now. Um, so I haven't watched those yet. So then in an effort, you know, kind of jonesing to go see a movie, once you start to go see them, so often, not to flex, um, but then you, you just kind of, they're, they're kind of fun, right? And once you have this subscription, you really don't, it doesn't hurt your wallet as much to see more movies. And I don't know, it just like, you start to almost get addicted to going. And anyway, so today I'm, I'm sitting around, I'm like, damn, I really want to go see a movie. And I did not think by watching the trailers, that A Haunting in Venice was really something that I needed to go see in theaters. I figured that I would go see it at some point through via trying to do this project and kind of document my feelings on movies and stuff like that um, for fun, but I did end up booking this movie today. Um, basically because I didn't watch Equalizer, but anyway. Um, just to kind of get brief on the before, I feel like I've been talking about that a little bit too much. Um, so hopefully, I mean, I'm gonna upload this video as soon as possible. That's the next thing that I'm kind of changing the style I'm doing this. I've banked a couple of videos, feel like I'm missing out on the opportunity to collect feedback on, uh, like if anybody actually sees those videos, I would want them to comment, you know, like they dislike something about the video or even if they like something, like comment that feedback in the description so I kind of understand either how to do these better or just what other people are thinking. It would especially be funny if somebody made like a, re a response video to a video of mine basically saying that they completely disagree with my take on whatever movie, especially because I'm not doing this to establish myself as like some sort of tastemaker or something. I literally just thought it would be funny to go see a movie hit record every time I do that. And then that would justify me going and seeing a bunch of movies or watch, spending a lot of my time watching them at home. So, I mean, that's a little bit, maybe it's good that I'm uploading this one soon because that'll kind of outlay what the purpose of this is. But um, I do have a couple movies that have already been banked um, that will be uploading alongside this, so. But anyway, going into the movie theater, um, today, you know, the Green Apple, Icy's gone, um, TMNT, I guess, is almost on its way out, and they've replaced it once again with Coca-Cola, so, you know, we did the normal thing. I haven't been there in a while, so I didn't feel bad about eating popcorn, <laughs> so I went in, uh, you know, scanned my pass on my new phone, works the same, no problem, um, went in, got regular popcorn, with an icy and again i'm just gonna say 17 dollars is a little bit a little bit like aren't we already paying 12 dollars to see the movie i mean i'm not because i'm doing the subscription but i mean if you're hitting me to get me in the door and once i buy the snacks it's kind of crazy but i guess i keep buying it so there you go uh but all of that out of the way you know haven't been in the movies in a while so buttered it up salted it that was all great popcorn was actually on point today almost every time i go and see a movie just because i'll see them at weird times the popcorn is not up to snuff but uh, like a little bit stale you know how it gets and no today it was fucking fired so popcorn was good icy was good did a little cherry coke sort of mixture situation that was pretty good um, you know, wasn't anybody weird in the theater. There were people that kind of talked when the movie started, but then they stopped. So as far as all that goes, it was a perfect um, movie, you know, situation, no issues, ready to go. Um, watching the trailers, I have seen a lot of these trailers before. 
but I was sort of, you know, getting primed for the movie in a little bit because while I did not expect to like this movie at all, all the trailers that were happening before this movie were things that I would probably be interested in, save that with uh, maybe, you know, today was they had the second version of the, the Marvels trailer and that I still don't understand why anybody, like what the point of that movie is, like why I'm thinking it's just one of these plot moving forward sort of things, but you know, just to imagine that we're now at the point where we're spending like tens of millions of dollars to make a movie that is just kind of like a throwaway to add to the universe. I mean, and may, you know what? The people involved in the movie, they're not saying that, right? They're obviously not thinking that because they did the movie, but um, just seeing the trailers, I'm just not interested. Maybe I'll be proven wrong and like that would make me happy because I'm definitely going to go see it at some point as a, as a you know... I've been talking all this crap about it every time I see the trailer and I'm seeing all these movies. If I duck that movie, I'm kind of a hypocrite, right? So we'll see what I think about that movie. I'll walk in unbiased, but I will probably not be caught up in the MCU. So that will be what it is. Um, there was another trailer. It's like the second time I've seen this trailer for the movie, The Creator. And that movie seems interesting. I think the cast seems interesting too, um, but I don't know. I can't tell if it's going to be actually interesting or if it's going to be basically just taking the same thematic questions that we asked when we saw Ghost in the Shell and sort of implanting the end of that movie into a world different slightly than that movie, but you know, like the the merging of human and AI, like what is that? Is that what we're exploring? Um, I don't know, it looks interesting. I think I, I definitely wanna see it, but I'm, I'm excited to see more trailers, so. But anyway, trying to keep this part brief. So, you know, that was the thing, all the other trailers and stuff I've pretty much seen before and look interesting. Um, Spielberg and Oprah doing the Color Purple remake. I didn't know uh, Spielberg was really like that type of guy, but there you go. Just saying like interesting matchup, but um, like maybe I need to open my eyes on Spielberg. I thought he only did like action movies and stuff like that, but you know, whatever. So anyway, seeing this movie, um, I was pleasantly surprised. That's kind of what I mean by like being primed by the trailers because everything I saw in the trailers all seemed like movies that I pretty much would want to see and that kind of flipped me on like, oh, maybe this movie will have a little bit more for me than I thought. And, you know, not not to give my opinion out early, but I was pleasantly surprised by this movie and I thought it was a really good um, way to spend my time. So the setting of this movie is you've got, and you know, I at the end of the movie in the credits, I saw that this was based on a famous book. So if I'm the only person on the earth um, that is troglodyte enough to have not heard about this beforehand, you know, my bad, but not knowing anything about the story or if how famous it is, I'm going to explain it. Um, basically it starts out with a famous detective who's retired and he's got a security guard that's, you know, stopping all these people from coming and giving him a new case. So you kind of assume that he's retired. He doesn't want to do any more cases and He's kind of leaving that life behind, right? Until somebody is allowed to be let through, um, somebody who's an old friend of his, and she tells him about a case, or not necessarily a case, but intrigues him about going to see this medium who she thinks has been able to basically be a real life medium, and she doesn't think that there's any tricks. She says, you know, I think I'm the smartest person that I know and I can't figure out how she does it. So now I'm gonna get the second smartest person I know to go and figure this out. And so that is sort of the way that it gets set up. And initially she convinces him to go along because she's like, okay, you're gonna to go to this Halloween party um, for these orphans as sort of like a cool guest. And then you'll attend this seance and you can determine whether this lady is real life or not. And 
basically this takes place in Venice, as the title would would say, and it takes place sometime after World War II, I think, is kind of what's being implied. And, you know, they're saying every house has got some haunting story or something like that. Um, you know, just kind of setting it up, and it's Halloween, right? So then they tell the story of the children's vendetta, how during the plague, there was this whole, this building that they're in now, used to be an orphanage or a hospital for children, and it used to be this great place, and then when the plague hit, all these adults got very scared, and so when the kids started to get sick, and the adults didn't want to get sick too, they literally locked the kids in this building and left them to die. And so then the implication is that there's all these spirits in the place and that they have this vendetta against any nurses or doctors and then that will, you know, on Halloween that causes them to kill a nurse or a doctor if they happen to be in the vicinity and they see a shadow of the children. Um, I don't know if it's on Halloween specifically. They, I don't know if they say that, but they definitely say that, you know, if you live in this house and you happen to be a part of that profession, then you're going to die and you're going to have like this slash mark on your back. And what's interesting and the reason why they're there to do a seance is that they believe that the daughter of the owner of the house, who is a famous opera singer, has that her daughter was died by being, you know, coerced into killing herself by the children because she used to talk to the children all the time when she was growing up like the children ghosts and then once she came back um, home from you know initially leaving home to start a new life with this boyfriend and stuff like that um, the boyfriend and her break up and then she's sort of goes home out of heartbreak but then she starts to see the children again and that caused her to kill herself or so that's the story we have is that they caused her to jump off the balcony but as the story progresses, they actually do the seance after they've kind of explained the story of the children's vendetta. And you get to meet some of the characters that are there. You know, you've got the guy that had broken up with her, finds out that the seance is happening somehow. And he shows up and he seems kind of like an asshole. But, you know, you might learn more as to why he sounds like that later on in the movie. I'm not going to scare, like, you know give away any spoilers, but the characters in this movie are actually somewhat complex and they do a good job of fooling you into thinking somebody is like a total dickhead or something like that. And then later on you're like, all right, well, you know, these people are more complex than just one um, character note sort of person analysis. But anyway, that that's kind of how the whole thing sets up. They do the seance, we find out and this, this, I believe, is not really a spoiler. But if you don't want to be spoiled at all, then like maybe skip the next 60 seconds. But essentially, you find out that at least to some extent, the medium uses tricks. And you find out that there are these two assistants, and they help her make the typewriter write things when it's not supposed to and from afar and stuff like that. And so first, you know, the detective gets this big W by being like, boom, these things are definitely fake. And therefore, the whole thing is fake. But then it seems like the medium still gets possessed. And then through the course of events that occur, I really can't spoil anything else without giving away some of the fun of the movie. But the detective himself, and I believe this is revealed in the trailers, begins to also see what he believes to be spirits, but he is a skeptic the whole time, but just, you know, he cannot ignore the fact that this is happening to him. And so then it sets up this very interesting sort of mystery thriller where you're following the, the detective throughout his business of figuring out what's been going on and stuff like that, and uh, trying to get to the bottom of things. And more interesting twists happen along the way. And, you know, I can't, I literally cannot give away any more than that. Otherwise, I'm sort of taking away some of the fun of the movie, especially for me as somebody who barely paid attention to the trailer and then was pleasantly surprised by the movie. But um, because I don't want to spoil anything else, let me just say that's the setup for the movie. And while when I first saw the trailers, I thought that was going to be a little bit contrived, 
I actually think it was not at all. And the way that this movie does this sort of genre of plot is pretty awesome. And so maybe I need to read the book, right? But um, I thought that this movie was actually really good and I was pleasantly surprised. So if I want to vaguely talk about why I like the movie and not spoil it and why I'm going to give it the score I'm going to give it, I'll just say that, you know, the movie is a good mystery film, which I feel like we haven't gotten in a while. It has the character um, of the detective is played very well in a way where it's believable and a little bit just, just slightly goofy, but in a way where like this person could totally exist in real life and they just happen to be this eccentric personality. And I kind of like that. Um, and then other people in the film kind of had a high energy performance as well. And that helped accentuate certain pieces of it and almost, you know, hide other aspects of the plot until they were relevant. And I think as the mystery unfolds, it's a very clever story and the pieces are there, but you just don't necessarily put them all together until about the same time the detective does. And I feel like that's pretty nice. It really had that effect of like me as a viewer, before it said out loud, I already knew what they were going to say. And so I was like, oh, that's what happened type of feeling. Um, but it wasn't way early on in the movie where it's like, oh, well, I already understand what's going to happen here. Um, and it wasn't completely hidden from the viewer where you couldn't figure it out yourself. And I thought that was really fun. I guess I just haven't seen a movie like that in a long time. I don't doubt that a lot of them exist, but it was pretty cool. So with all that being said, um, to not give any more details about the movie, even though there were other aspects of it that I liked, I would just say that if you think you would be interested in a movie like this, then you would like this movie. And I think that on its own, objectively as a movie, it does really well. The sound is kind of minimalist and that's fun in a way. Like I can almost hear myself eating too much, but it also accentuated the uh, little, you know, like whispers off in the distance and stuff like that, which are central to the plot of this movie a little bit. And I thought that the cinematography um, and the shots that they chose were actually very clever and it too didn't flip too much. You know, it felt very like minimalist and it helped keep driving the plot at a decent pace. And so um, if any of that makes sense, but I'll just say, given all of that, if I'm plugging this movie into a score out of five, then I will give The Haunting in Venice a solid four. And that's because personally, I believe for a movie to be a five or a five plus, you know, you have to literally be like the best movie ever. Um, and I think this movie is a good movie. And I think if you want to go see a movie, you should see this movie. Um, if you haven't already seen like some of the other crazy movies that are out right now, like Barbie and Oppenheimer, um, but they're probably about to leave. But I would just say that if you're at all interested in this movie and you're trying to get into sort of that spooky fall spirit, um, it's, it's a good watch. And so um, I would go see the movie in theaters. I, so plugging into that as well, um, I would go see the movie in theaters and I'll give it a solid four. So that's A Haunting in Venice. That's the review. And I'll see you guys on the next one.